guys, and welcome to this week's episode of the 20 Minutes Interview. And this week we have Gil from the Netherlands that's going to do the interview. And I'm super excited about it because Gil actually, well, she's going to tell her, uh, tell you herself. So I will just give the word to Gil. There we go. Hi, Gil. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Elisa. I uh, met you through uh, Tom Oshuizer, our a mutual friend and he's a colleague of mm -hmm. me with whom I studied uh, medicine a long time ago and uh, we have uh, mutual interest in, in a lot of things and uh, I'm very excited about this talk with you because you. Uh, <laughs> there are many questions on many levels and uh, currently we have uh, the coronavirus and I'm a medical doctor and I'm part of the Covid collective in our country that's a group of uh, 2,300 doctors and 35,000 um, participants who are um, worried about what's happening and see that there are several possibilities to, to treat and several possibilities to um, um, help people who are having corona, but they're not used. And we want an open discussion, then that's not happening. So um, you can look at on uh, several levels um, to the coronavirus, but I'm very interested in seeing your view. What is the, the deeper uh, cause? Why, why is this virus here? So um, the virus was, it, we can say it was man-made or not man-made, the virus exists. The virus was something you, you doctor knows, is something that's been in animals for a long time. And then eventually now it, it's a human thing. If it's created by man, so it could make the jump, it needed an extra monocle. Somehow this happened. And um, so if you look at it from that perception, then it's a part of, oh, one second. <laughs> we want to change on earth. And in order of creating change, uh, we need friction. In order of creating friction, we need uh, a bigger scandal for the friction to be big enough and wide enough for awareness to arise. The, um, the virus itself exists. The way that it is being used and the, the fear that lays upon it can be discussed if that is political <laughs> and, and money-wise that this is something... Um, a different payout and so if you look into the virus itself and you look into the human immune system what happens is that when when the virus came in, out in the first year it was meant to create to strike fast and hard but the molecules inside of the virus was unstable which means that over a season or one and a half seasons, then the intensity of the effects of the virus would start to be less and our immunity will be higher because we created more antibodies and then we will actually be able to have it like any other disease and flu and et cetera. Mm -hmm. The way that it's being used right now, <laughs> we see a whole other pattern. We see a whole other outplay. Um, so yeah, what part would you like me to elaborate on? Because <laughs> the, vi no. the virus itself is no more dangerous than what it has been. So yeah. these things about the new variations and et cetera, there's so much fear upon it, but, but the worst part was in the beginning because at that point, our, our body systems were not used to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think nothing happens without a reason. And no. <clears throat> what I feel is like we humans need to grow on a certain level. So yes. what, what is the virus uh, helping us, maybe? It's you, you, can, you can look at this perception. So one perception is that when we date the work, the lockdowns, we realized that we needed to look within ourselves and we realized how much we are polluting our own planet, right? So there was these wake-up calls within the separation and the lockdowns, which was absolutely needed for people. Many people need to came out of the, of the hamster wheel and like, oh, okay, could actually feel themselves and feel life. So, so in order of creating big new things and growth, you do need this space where you actually have time to think. Uh, so this was a part of, of the great thing about the COVID. Another thing is that 
with all the madness going on at the moment, it 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 appeals for you to either look inside and learn to feel what you're feeling, your own feelings, or following something or someone you put your trust in. But it, it is really this part where people um, have the opportunity more than more than before to to rise in what they believe is right within themselves. Also, there will be a shift on the planet. There has been many, but this is one of them, which allow more light actually to enter. But in order of that, we all know that then darkness needs to come to the surface. So we are kind of in that process. And so you can definitely look at it positively. It's just that right now in this very moment, a lot of people are feeling extremely dense and this you feel on the planet. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I is it I um sometimes when you grow a little bit you connect to old pain. Is that what mm-hmm. is happening? Because I myself I once in a while usually I'm not afraid, but once in a while while I do get a little bit afraid again, as if it's something old that is being hit. It's definitely all pain that comes to the surface. That's one part of it. And if you have pain inside of you, if you have fear inside of you, you have a certain vibration. This vibration is the vibration only matched to the fear that's running around in the outside world. And because the, the density of the fear is so big at the moment, then you get taken over by these waves of fear. Like, oh, okay, I didn't know it hit me this hard. Um, because then you become part of the collective fear in that uh, very moment the best thing to do with this is just accept how it is and allow it to flow through you and once again let it go it's to not fear that old stuff come up or old fear comes up or etc it's to allow it to transcend through your system and yourself Mm -hmm. i have had this dead fear for example it's so funny like literally fear of dying but i know everything was going on on the other side of this life so why should I be fearing that? But it's something that it's a shock I got when I was four uh, because I accidentally run my own timeline to the end. <laughs> Oops. And there's like no part like then because uh, after this life, I'm going to leave planet Earth and I'm going back to where I came from and then choices, blah, 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 but, but no longer the earthy. So for me, I just want to live and feel every moment of life. And, and I got this wake up call when I was four, right? And for a long period, this comes up once in a while. But the last, mm, since the COVID came, I have it like so often. I get hit by these shock waves of, oh, I'm going to die. It's like, yes, everyone is going to die from this life one day. It is not new. It's known to humanity. (laughs) But it literally hits me like this big anxiety. Like the other day I had to literally just... I hit myself on the heart as I was walking home and people on Steve was like what's happening with this blonde lady <laughs> I was like okay get over it but it's because there's so much fear at the moment right so the second mm-hmm. that I accidentally go into this feeling which is deep within me oh my just taking the whole wave mm-hmm. of the conscious uh, and that is fear it's, it's the um, fight or flight fear right so it's the life of that fear and that's also what what contains hold people in in a state of fear that we have to learn to move through in order of navigating our life and trusting our own immune system and, and created a new world reality basically hmm. and that's that's um so this virus is helping with that Yes, in a, in a sense it is, because um, you can call it a form of a wake-up call. <laughs> for some, it's, it's, not, it's not a nice journey, you know, <laughs> not for everyone. For some people, it's really not a nice journey. And, and, and a lot will fall, but some will rise. And, and I want to say that it's, it's not good, it's not bad, but it was needed. And the perception of which we look at it with is the perception that we choose to hold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you put it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People, and what do you think about the vaccination? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
for me, I can see the beneficial part that has been in the previous vaccinations. I understand the meaning of them and I see how it did have made people feel safe during the ages. I had this um, feeling four years back that the next vaccine that comes out uh, will not be good for humanity. And then this whole pandemic close down came and they're going to talk about vaccines. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so for me, I don't trust the, the RNA vaccines. It's not tested uh, enough on humanity. And for me, if I look inside of it, I feel it. Um, we don't know how people respond on it on the longer run. And I am not a fan of vaccines. But on the other hand, I'm a fan of consciousness. And I know that if one really truly believes the vaccine is good for that person, it will be good for that person. But that one needs to feel it within the core. If one are doubting or afraid, then the vaccine will function different inside of their system. It is with the vaccine as it is with everything else. And for me, I definitely don't believe that the vaccine is good for me. So I know that I cannot take it and be good <laughs> because mm -hmm. that is not something clear inside of me. Yeah, I understand. So many, we are very, very worried about the children. They are, they want to uh, vac vaccinate. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Uh, do you have um, tips how we can um, make more? Well, we uh, yeah, how we can overcome that hap that that happens. Yeah, so we are getting closer and closer to understand how the spike protein works and how to help extract them from the human body. So even those kids who will get the vaccine and if they will have a strong response to what's them, which some of them will have, um, we are getting closer to understand how we can get the spikes out of the body. The thing that I'm looking at is the, the very, uh, how can you say, the way the RNA is, is uh, surrounding the cells and how it's sending the spikes out. I can see how we can help and navigate the spikes, but the, the very um, circle around the cell, uh, so far I cannot see how we remove it fully. But it is in my belief that as for every poison, there is an uh, antidote and also with stuff like this. Uh, people with different layers of consciousness, there will be some kids that will be absolutely fine with the vaccine. They can even get children. They will not feel uh, suppressed by it existing in their systems. But then there's these very hypersensitive children and higher sensitive children that will have a strong, strong reaction to such. And also it will block some of their hormonic, hormonal, hormonal, developing and etc. How can we protect them? The what best thing we, we can do is being as true to ourselves and each other as possible and um, have an acceptance of what's going on and then from there focus on, okay, <clears throat> this is where we are at. We have to accept the world reality at the moment. How can we support with love and care? How can we bring in um, softness? How can we contra-take? So if we look into the vibration of the vaccine, right? There's a feeling of protection and fight. If I, if I become the fiver, then there's like this feeling of it, it, it first goes in and then it settles and then it makes a shield and then it starts fighting, right? Everything around. So how do we contract this? So the, the, the opposite of shield and fighting is being open, it's love, it's harmony, it's trust. So it's to find a vibration that's exactly the opposite of the one which is, and then you can neutralize it. I don't know if it makes sense, but it, on a vibrational message, on a vibrational level, this is what I see. And um, what is important to say about all this vaccination thing, it, it will make people realize that 
Um, we should learn to listen to <laughs> listen to what we we believe in. And once again, it will not affect everyone. Some people will be just fine, which is which is cool because then okay, we are in acceptance of this. We allow people to do exactly what they want to do. We love them for being free, but we need to focus on on those who it will be harmful for, and those who it will be harmful for. They need love, care, and trust, and they need to regain trust within their own system. So reconnect to their own cells, reconnect to their own DNA, trust the value within that, within them, and that that uh, reconnect to the immune system and let the immune system take over their own body system once again. So if we could make like a meditation or something that could bring people to that state of being inside of themselves, they could actually reverse the whole thing. Mm -hmm. if, your, if your energy level is high enough, you can sustain, you can have the vaccine without mm -hmm. trouble. Yeah. And also, even if your energy, how can you say, um, Yes and no, not my energy level, but some people are vibrationally matched to not be harmed by it because they are not supposed to vibrate on a higher level than where the vaccine goes. That's one thing. And the other thing is people who are really good in, in centering their whole being of vibration and the higher lives, they can do whatever to the body they want, they won't affect them, you know. But we are humans <laughs> and we are having this human experience full of trust and distrust and movement so mm -hmm. it's really truly important that everybody just feel into where am i in life where am i in myself what do i choose for regardless of uh, political pressure regardless of family pressure regardless of pressure from the outside how do i feel in my body do i trust my immune system am i actually afraid of this virus or Am I just afraid of the, the, the pressure of not being able to move freely in my life because I'm not taking it? Now you must choose for <laughs> the thing inside of your heart uh, and, and not, not the fear of um, hope. There we go. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and, not the, and not the fear of not being able to live our lives. I, I mean, one thing is... Um, it's a free choice. Like everything else in life, you should do what feels right for you. We should not judge one or another. We can be scared for each other's, like mothers protecting, protecting their kids. But every choice is okay. What is not okay is when it becomes group pressure, when people start choosing a vaccine to be able to live, choosing a vaccine because that there's pressure of not being able to have a free life if you don't follow the stream. This is where human ego takes over and that's where the game becomes dangerous. And this is actually the part I fear the most. I don't fear the COVID or the vaccine. I fear the splitting between humanity. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so we must be some examples of just being like, humans, you all welcome, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> well, what I... Uh... Uh, listened uh, to today was uh, a very active jurist in our country and she at first she was very hard fighting because she saw all the laws that were um, not taken care of and being made which were very um, well not right and that made her very active but now she stopped being active and she is into love because she said well it doesn't help it's so big yes <laughs> Yeah, no, but it doesn't help. So if we look into vibrations, right? So, okay, universal law. Let's forget that we're human for one second. Human, universal, wow, my words today. Universal law <laughs> is that everything is vibration. There exists nothing else. So it doesn't matter which side of the table you are on. You are the vibration that you are and you send out. Mm -hmm. So if we say that we have the one side they are fighting because... Those stupid people, they don't take the vaccine, right? So they are mm -hmm. fighting us. The government is fighting. Then on the other side, they're like, yeah, but you should take the vaccine, blah, 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 blah. So then what we send out is fight. What we send out is resistance. What we send mm -hmm. out is war. It's not peace. It's not love. So what we attract is more of that because that is what we send out. That's what we amplify. So 
the only way to actually create a better world reality is being in acceptance of other people's choices and also the shit they send out <sighs> and be in a state of love and authenticity mm -hmm. so whatever feelings we have it's all good allowed to move through our body also the resistance to anger and etc but but choose to have the the perception of acceptance and love and if you fight because fight like i'm I'm a fighter. Like I cannot sit here and say, "Oh, you shouldn't fight." I do boxing every every day, but you shouldn't fight, right? So, <laughs> so, um, so contradictorily. But if you if you fight, then then you choose your battles. You fight it, and you let the fight go. So, for example, when I go to the gym. I fight like a crazy maniac two hours, and after that, I'm purely zen. Then you mm -hmm. transform the energy inside of your body flow. You send it out, and you let it go. This is what everything in life is allowing the transcendences of what is. Mm -hmm. The battle that needs to be fighted is helping to not split humanity at the moment. It's helping the authentic authenticity and, and to bring more awareness of those who have the control <laughs> uh, using it in a form where, well, you cannot control people unless they allow them to be controlled, but it's it's more like bringing more and more awareness and staying in a, a vibration of acceptance at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's It can be difficult, but that's kind of what is needed. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is that we have people on both sides. So we have those who cannot not fight, you know, on both sides. We have people, we have the whole the hoax people and the what do you call it the thing where you say things there's a conspiracy theory people and people are realizing okay parts of this is true so we always have the extremes mm -hmm. it, on, we have duality on earth so the extremes will always be present but we as, as human beings and we as whatever we are doing it's it's about seeing both sides but knowing that it both have to accept but choosing their authenticity from our heart and manifesting that does it make sense yeah i think I, I it does <laughs> it <laughs> okay, is. but it but it's on a it's on a vibrational level how is it on a physical level how can we live that on a physical level it's about accepting ourselves so you have to take it down to the very basic of self acceptance it's mm -hmm. take it down to the very basis of the choices that you choose to make every single day when you step out of your door. Do I choose to smile to the homeless guy or do I choose to be in denial of them? Do I choose to uh, throw things in the street or do I choose not to? Do I choose to not express my feelings or do I choose to let it through my system? It's, it's to become super self-aware and also to allow ourselves to live at the same time. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest thing in, in humanity is the suppression of everything we do not allow ourselves to do or be. So then we forget how to listen to ourselves. And then those who forget how to listen to themselves are extremely easy to manipulate and control by fear. So as more as you allow yourself to listen to you and be the free human being that you are sent here to be, unless less easy you are to manipulate and control and as more joy you will get out of the incarnation of which you are here to learn and experience wow <laughs> <laughs> so we all need to be authentic <laughs> yes <laughs> and respect everybody in in whatever phase of life they are and choose. yes but also be allowed to call them an asshole if they are an asshole you know because or else you're not you're not authentic but when you finish calling them an asshole then you love them again I, this, is the, this is the deal <laughs> so it can change quickly <laughs> yes definitely definitely emotion mm -hmm. is a part of life and it's okay to feel it and, and be moved by it and move with it but holding on to it or suppressing it, that is the dangerous part. Allowing it full expression, do do do, it's fine. Afterwards, we all love, we all the same. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. A <laughs> um, lot of people get uh, physical problems at the moment. And yeah. um, 
do you see a connection between uh, physical things and um, emotions or development? Definitely, like all physical uh, issues are linked to our emotional state of being. If I look at a person, uh, I see their emotions uh, stored inside of them. So if I see a trauma in the food or I see uh, inflammation in the gallon or something like this, I can go in there and I can feel the emotions which is hold that causes it. So every single symptom you have is linked to uh, a memory or our embodiment of something emotionally. Mm -hmm. and, and the body is like a body map, you know? It's like a map over your existence, basically. It's, um, I, I feel the same. And uh, mostly I don't find it so very difficult to see for someone else who, what he needs, but I find it quite difficult for myself. <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's also part of life. <laughs> Do you have some so, tips how we can um, connect more easily to, to those parts? Because I think the better you are aware of it and the better you can make those dense parts more um, light and, and vibrant, the better your immune system works and the better your development is. Yes, I think what goes wrong for many therapists is that they have all these tools how to do things that then when they start doing it, it becomes very mental. And the moment it becomes mental, you do not link to the emotions that are stored inside of your system. So in order of doing it to oneself, when you are a therapist or somebody who knows about these systems, is to fully surrender, to let go of everything you think you know, and just go to whatever place in the body that you feel the tensions or the fear or whatnot, and just listen to it. Listen to what it has to say. Listen to what it shows. Listen to the picture that comes up. So you fully surrender to that place within your body system to talk. Because that, you don't manipulate that. You can control. That's not a system. It's, it's just purely you surrendering to whatever is stored inside of you to be heard. And the moment that it's being heard, it's already transcending. So it's kind of win-win situation. Mm -hmm. but what I see that happens is, for instance, when people have COVID and have uh, terrible headaches, a lot of um, yeah, contraction actually is happening. Yeah? A lot of fear. Um, yeah definitely yeah. i had this dream the other day i i dreamt i got covid and that i was being choked yeah. it is a horrible way to die oh my god yeah. <laughs> i'm so happy when i woke up and now my throat is sore obviously you know <laughs> like, ah! but um uh, what happens is the fear takes over the, the fear takes over and when the fear takes over you contract you get scared the moment you get scared you run out of what you don't want to feel and you are in your head and so step number one is being in a state of allowance and then create as safe environment as possible as comfortable as possible and with um yeah, create safety so you can relax as much as possible and and come back into your body. The moment you're back into your body, it's easier to navigate and, and return to a place of health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The spiritual part is quite important too. Eh? And how how can you um, how can we? Do you, do you know a way to make it more earthy, to make it for every day? Uh, make uh, spirituality earthy? Practical, or? yeah. Oh, <laughs> so uh, I, I was born a seer, you know, and I never thought about what I should do every day other than live. <laughs> so the human, <laughs> the human experience is to take every day as it is and learn from every moment that appears it's to being open for the opportunities that knocks the door instead of running away from them so to be open for the lessons life has to learn you and to reflect upon it but one of the things that i if i should say something to do every every day it would be to mm, 
allowing yourself to reflect over what has happened you know so you run your day through and at the end of the day you're like okay how present was i well how present was i if i look into humanity and look into how we move and navigate there's a lot of things we do on the autopilot right so if we could step out of the door each morning with this feeling of wanting to attend in life what would we feel what what will we be part of so to be present to be present to really be present that would that would be the highest spiritual advice <laughs> it's very difficult it, it can be yeah definitely and sometimes it's uh, also just easier to run away for a while but when we then are here you can like eat and every moment in life has its value even in those boring settings or or repeating these settings it still have value you can look at the table for so many different angles you choose mm-hmm. which angle you want to look from right so i can sit at the same table for 10 days in a row there's the same things on the table but each day i can choose to focus on a different thing so if you are in a situation where you feel life is boring i can't move from it okay but then change your view look at different angles where you at until mm-hmm. you're ready to move Thank you. What I realize sometimes is that I say something or or post something on on social media with with a good intention, with the intention of making people aware of what's happening. Or uh, but then sometimes people react on a very weird way that I don't understand. Yeah. People uh, when people. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Come One back. <laughs> yes. Oh, please. How do you do this? Oh. Oh, shoot. <sighs> okay, there we go. <laughs> sorry, yeah. me. No um, when people are in fear or very uh, strong in their beliefs, if something are touching those beliefs, as trusting, t- touching the fear or the ego, they always will upon so they have really strong opinions and fighting it but basically they are fighting themselves what is in resistance and fear it is very close linked together right if you don't hold fear you also open for other perception than the one you hold yourself it is um something a trail that has been in humanity for a long time and we can look at it positively or we can look at it negatively positively it helps movement at some point it helped this thing of rightfulness and standing up for your belief and standing strong in yourself and standing up for your people and woo, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and that has a value um mm-hmm. but when it becomes this thing where you need to fight people on the internet because you can hide behind a the screen then it's a whole different level um but we need to even look at this with love we need to understand that it's not about you it's not about me it's about people themselves So um, to really, truly see that they are moved by fear and ego and just don't interact with it, just Mm -hmm. let it be. Then eventually you will send out an energy that will no longer attract those energies. Mm -hmm. It's because you still have a fear of standing out somehow. Like like still this thing there is uh, not fully settled in your system so you will attract both parties okay it is within my system that's why it's resonating okay yes so i need to withdraw from that part no just to look at it with love be like i i have had like stalkers in my life right and some of them were pretty uh, intense <laughs> and for a long time i i blamed myself but then i learned at some point you know it's not about me it's, it's about whatever is going on inside of them. And I am okay the way that I am. Whoops. Back. And I am yes. okay the way that I am. And so then they can do whatever they want. I just look at them with neutral, neutral, neutralized, not, not neutral. love, not hate, neutral. not love. Mm-hmm. Yes, let them be for whatever they are. And then the only thing they project is their own on themselves. Then you become like, not even a mirror, you become like uh, like air. 
and eventually as they are not feeding upon an energy you send out uh, they will take their energy elsewhere okay because um i once realized that you cannot um um if you withdraw in a fight the other one just kills you yes 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 that's true so if you are yes and no <laughs> Um, okay, if you uh, if you're having a f- okay, we're in the ring. We're having a fight, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a contra boxer. That means that the other person runs towards me, punching after my head. I move and I punch back. That's kind of uh, how I do in life. So <laughs> I let that person just go crazy. If they run and go crazy, that's cool. But then you flow like the water. You move away from the punches with resistance free just with the flow so they can punch next to you and in a fight then you punch them back when the opening is there <laughs> but <laughs> then you strike back <laughs> yes <laughs> so that's if it's a physical fight if it's a verbally fight the question lies within what do i want out of this conversation do my ego needs to win is this a conversation for humanity where humanity needs me to stand up and show that there is like a win in talking or do i simply i had i had like let me give you an example i had the, this is not a fight but i had a workshop somewhere and there was somebody on stage and he was like yeah i've been meditating for 20 years so who are you to come and tell me anything blah 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 and i told him guy dude you're you're in your head so if you meditated for 20 years, maybe you should try something new. Just breathe through your heart and live. And he got so angry with me. It was insane. Oh, my God. So he literally, like, his face changed color, you know. Like, I was like the devil at the moment. And But the funny thing is that what I did was I just standed in myself. I spoke my truth. I didn't do anything else than being honest and to the point. And that's it. So I didn't hold back. I didn't fight him. I was just honest. Every single person in the whole workshop, they were like, oh my God, okay, this is his ego, go absolutely nuts, this is not her, you know? So by by standing in your truth and your authenticity, Mm -hmm. you gain so much more than fighting somebody who's just there to um, show its ego is the biggest. This -hmm. will always make you win because then people can see it for themselves. All you have to do is just be pure and honest. Mm-hmm. Well, I find it difficult. And uh, Jesus said, I "Turn understand. your other cheek." Yeah. <laughs> I know. I have this talk with him a lot. I'm like, "Yeah, I did that in the boxing ring, and dude, it's not fun, you know." But <laughs> 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 but the whole point, like, I always had this talk with him, and he he had this thing where he said, "Just give me your burdens, and I will carry them." Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we kind of made this agreement that I, I, I'm the one who says, give me your burdens and I will show you how to deal with them. So I will not carry the burdens of others. I will just show them how they can deal with them themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an important uh, change of, of, of timeline that um, people learn to take responsibility for their own incarnation and what they send out and what they don't. Mm-hmm. So you can heal and, and go on. Exactly. And take your own. Each, yes. And, and it's also about respecting each soul. So I know every single soul is sent here to have a certain movement, a growth and a learning. And they bring this back to the universe as the expansion of which you're sent here for. So if I just carry all the burdens, the expansion will be like zero. But if I show them how to navigate within their own world reality and what they're sent here for learning... I am helping their soul the most, and so are we. So it's to help people, to guide people, to to help themselves. Uh, that has the biggest value in this time. The guru mm-hmm. age is over. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they, what we used to say. If you find your guru, kill him. <laughs> oh, please don't make me a guru. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead enough in this life. <laughs> But uh, if you have, uh, does everybody has a soul mm-hmm. on earth? Yes and no. 
<laughs> yes. So, so the, the most humans there's incarnated has a soul, and they are just newborn souls or old souls, but they are different levels or in their soul learning. So you you, you clearly feel the difference. Some people are incarnated as pure dark, some incarnated as pure light, but 99.9% .9 of humanity is incarnated as something in between. Mm -hmm. and, and what we need to do is to become more light or? Well, we need to become more authentic. So we become more closer to the truth that lies within our heart and our soul lessons. If we are authentic and close to our heart, we will automatically become more light. It's not about light or darkness. It's about authenticity in the world that we live in because the light is already here, but we're the one who needs to learn to tap into it and know that we are. It. If we are constantly searching to become lighter, 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 this is what went wrong in the whole uh, New Age movement, right? It's that we search so much for the light that we bypass and we and we suppress the darkness, so it actually does the vice versa part. So it's, it's accepting the darkness to run through us and, and not see the darkness as anything else than movement, and then you automatically become lighter. I hope you understand what I mean. Hmm. To accept both sides, that they're there. Yes, and by that, you are not bounded to it. You are light. It's, it's simple. Mm -hmm. You are sent as a little light being, but here we have this game of duality and dark and light. And, but if you in, take it all in and let it flow through you, you are not controlled by it. Then you automatically come back to your center. Mm -hmm. I think our time is running out. <laughs> are we? <laughs> yeah, but oh. you are so welcome to come back because I know you have a million questions and I, I do. Will love you back. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful talking to you, Elisa. Thank you so much, so much for the opportunity. Yeah, I'm so happy you are with us. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for the viewers, thank you so much for being with us. I'm sorry, my mumble and jumbling thingy today. I don't know what's going on, but. If you like the interview or if you have any questions or comments to me and you, just write it in the comments below and uh, we will look into it. And if you would like to see you back here for more of her awesome questions, just let us know as well. And uh, yeah, remember to push the subscribe button, maybe the like button and have a beautiful, beautiful week. Doodoo! Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>